You're listening to Electrify Mojo Rare Moments. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button. Excerpts from the audio biography of Electrify Mojo. I, I can remember it as plain as day. It was on a, a Thursday afternoon. It was after four o'clock, I'm sure, because I know that because the switchboard at WGPR was still open. We didn't close until five. And what I remember about this Thursday afternoon is that uh, Celestine Harris, the receptionist, put out an APB for me. She knew I was in the radio station, but she didn't know where because WGPR is a pretty big place and I could have been upstairs, downstairs, in the back, in the TV department or wherever. Or in my little four-cornered room, which is where I spent most of my time. It was my own personal music library and, and also my office. And I used to go there just to listen to music and see what it sounded like and imagine it in my head being played on my show, which um, I did often. Most of the time, I spent the my days uh, traveling around Metro Detroit. I traveled pretty much as a, a stranger in different neighborhoods. One of the reasons why I was always, I am always, and I will be always reluctant to take pictures. I really did not want to go as a person on the radio from a physical perspective. I really wanted to travel as a stranger in neighborhoods and just talk to people. Just talk to them and say, hey, how you doing? What's going on? How's your life? And what kind of music are you into? And when you listen to radio, what kind of stuff do you expect to hear on radio? What would you like? For a radio station to be to you, what do you want it to do for you? I mean, I talk to people all the time like that. I mean, all over Metro Detroit. I, I just used to walk, and some people told me it was dangerous, but I mean, nobody knew me. I was just really a stranger, and I, I you know, frankly, I heard good things and bad things, and uh, but that's kind of like what I wanted. Then, you know, I would uh, come back to the radio station and think about everything and put a show together. Well, Celeste Dean finally tracked me down and she said it was a very, very urgent. And it was from a promotion person by the name of Larry Davis. Larry and I were cool and we knew each other. But I didn't spent a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with uh, anybody in the uh, promotion industry because I kind of like had my own agenda of what I wanted to play and what I wanted my show to sound like. And I really did not want to have uh, any outside influences. I pretty much just, if someone wanted to drop records off of me, I pretty much did not want to meet with them one-on-one -on -one or personally. It just drop it off. And my thing was, if uh, I like it, you might hear it. If I love it, you will definitely hear it. And if you hear it, there's no reason to call because I might just like it for a moment. And uh, if I didn't like it, you definitely would not hear it. There would be no reason to call because, you know, it's just the way it was. Um, so that's just pretty much the kind of relationship I had with everybody, Larry Davis included. But I got on the phone with Larry, and Larry said, 
This is urgent. This is really urgent. I already know the answer uh, to the question that I'm going to ask. He said, but I'm going to ask it anyway. He said, but before you answer, here's what I want you to think about. I'm going to take my hat off as a promotion person for Electra Records Warner Brothers. And I'm going to put on my brother cap. And I was wondering if you would take off your disc jockey hat and just put on your brother cap. I just want you to ride around Bell Owl. I just want to know that I'm not crazy and that this cat really has something. He said, there's a, a cat that is about to be dropped from Warner Brothers because they just don't know what to do with this young brother. So let me tell you a little bit about him. The cat is going to get dropped because um, his album, no one knows what to do with it. He is one of the most talented persons I've heard in the music industry. He wrote all of the songs on the album. He played all of the instruments on the album. He arranged all of the songs on the album. He sang all of the vocals on the album. He designed the album cover. He's one of the most incredible cats ever in the music industry. He said, if there were a reincarnation of Jimi Hendrix and Beethoven, this would be that guy. Jimi Hendrix, Beethoven, Mozart, the greatest of the greatest all rolled into one person. So I said, wow. As I tell you what, ordinarily I would say no. But here's what I promised to do. I'm not making any promises to play anything on this album. I'm only promising to ride around and listen with an open ear. But I said to myself, He will not be able to look at me and get any ideas as to whether I like this music or not. I said, while I'm riding around Bel Al, I am going to have a stone face. I could imagine like a lot of promotion people do, you know, they get really into a song, you know, their face start frowning up and, and they start playing air guitar. I said, look, when this cat goes into all of those facial contortions, I'm just going to look at the boats on the river. I'm going to look at the ducks. Uh, I'm just going to look around. I am not going to have any expression. So we got in the car, headed to Bell Isle, you know, and I, I'm headed out there to hear this miracle cat. The music I started did not playing. believe existed anyway. Uh, I was prepared not to be impressed. So we pulled up on Bell Al. He popped the tape recorder on. And I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to show any expression. And I think the first tune I heard was Bambi. And I was totally blown away, but I was still stone faced. And then I heard, uh, I want to be your lover. And I was still stone faced. And then I heard, why you want to treat me so bad? Still stone faced. But I was thinking to myself, this is some of the most incredible music I've ever heard in my life. And then I heard still waiting. And I knew at that moment, I really could not wait to get back to the radio station. I really could not wait until 10 o'clock came. I said, because tonight I am going to wear this album out. So Larry was over there just going through all kind of contortions. He was singing, he was frowning, and 
I was just looking out the window, cool as a cucumber. So finally we rode all around Bell Al. I did not say a word. And he dropped me back off at the radio station and I said thank you. I still did not say anything. And he went into his spiel. He said, look, I have done everything in my power to make sure that this uh, guy at least got a hearing from you. He said, I have no idea what you think about this at all. You didn't give any expression or you didn't say anything. He said, the only thing I know is that this cat is going to get dropped simply because uh, when I take him across town to the pop stations and to the riffs and the other stations, uh, they're cool with it until they see the album cover. And when I take him to the GPRs and to the JLBs and the other stations, they are cool with it uh, until they hear the music. It, it sounded nothing like Tyrone Davis. It sounded nothing like the Manhattans. It sounds nothing like any of that. But because uh, no one is willing to think outside the box one of the most talented guys ever who has such vast potential is not going to realize it because he's not going to get that chance and more than likely he will be dropped and I said yeah it is a shame that he's going to get dropped but what I was thinking he is going to get dropped right under my needle as soon as 10 o'clock comes, this will be all over. Larry had no idea. At 10 o'clock, I played the whole album. The city went crazy. People went wild. I mean, they were losing their minds. People coming down to the radio station. Who in the heck was that? And then I started playing a, a combination of Prince and Jimi Hendrix. Back to back. Uh, Bambi. All along the watchtower. And uh, uh, why you want to treat me so bad. Uh, dropping down to the wind cries Mary. It was just kind of like one of those uh, special nights on Detroit radio where somehow you knew that a star had been born. You knew that a star had been born and a new day had dawned. And that's pretty much how I started playing a whole lot of Prince music and I just thought I had a responsibility to make sure that he got heard and that he got a platform to take it to the next stage. That's what happened. Electrifying Mojo with the final farewell to Prince. And now I shall look to the sky where you have gone and remember you as Shakespeare's Horatio remembered Hamlet and bowed down low and bid him farewell. Good night, sweet prince, and may the flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. I keep telling myself, Mojo, it's just a bad dream. Not the greatest of the greatest, but reality getting in the way. News flashes were flashing purple rain around the world in a day. Thank you for all of you you gave us. How do we turn all of this colorblind pain into purple rain? Cause this is what it feels like when doves fly. No need to wonder where you are. I'm sure I know where you've gone. All of your kindness and generosity unannounced. 
your cover is blown. And to the perfect people who say, wait a minute, I say, let he or she who was without sin cast the first stone. Hello, Prince. We are computer blue. In your own words, nothing compares to you. You are one of, you the, are greatest, one of the greatest, of the greatest, of the greatest to ever live, to ever live. You played you every, played instrument, every instrument, imaginable. imaginable. You wrote, you wrote, produced, produced, arranged, arranged, directed, directed, directed and, performed, and performed. A Grammy a winning, Grammy artist, winning artist, an Academy, an Academy award, winning award winning artist. artist. Man, man. When our names, when our names have been washed, have been away, washed away by the sands, by the sands of time. time. To another, to generation, another generation, you will continue, you will continue to, live, to live for all time, for all time, for all for time, all time. Hello, Prince. Hello, Prince. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello from hello the from the hello other Prince. Side. Hello, Detroit. How are you? All right. How are you? Well, Prince, I heard nothing but magic flowing down from the concert. How was it? in there. Well, you know what? I was driving home from the gig, wiping sweat off my brow, and I heard automatic. And we just got through playing it. And we don't normally play that one, but went over pretty good, and I think it's because of you and what you've done for us and my thing. It's a good feeling. I just want to tell all my little motor babies that I'm just happy to be here, and it's just a fun way to spend my birthday. Sure. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Prince, uh, you've, uh, you've been the entertainer uh, that uh, has insisted on doing things one way, your way. <laughs> well, you know, like I worked a long time under a lot of different people. Um, and uh, most of the time I was doing it their way. And, uh, I mean, that was cool, but, you know, I figured if I worked hard enough and uh, kept my head straight, one day I'd get to do it on my own, and that's what happened. So, I feel like I don't try to hurt nobody, and I, like I say, keep my head on straight. My way usually is the best way. Growing up in, in Miniwood, as this has been now called, simply because, uh, that is uh, the hot point on this planet right now. Well, it's been called a lot of things, but it's always uptown to me. Uptown? Yes. Well, what was it like growing up uptown? Uh, pretty different. Uh, kind of sad, to be exact. <laughs> I mean, the radio was dead. The discos was dead. The ladies was kind of dead. So I felt like, you know, if we wanted to make some noise and I wanted to turn anything out, I was going to have to... Um, get something together, which is what we did. We put together a few bands and uh, turned it into Uptown. That consisted of a lot of bike riding nude, but, you know, it worked. <laughs> we had fun. So that's why I wanted to come here on my birthday, because I wanted to give them a little taste of where we live and get a little taste of where y'all live. Um, to me, this is like my second home. If I could spend the night in somebody's crib, no, I would. This is hotel. They're real nice to us, but this bed is hard. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about you. You you've uh, you've made fantastic albums, and you've made fantastic movies, and you're making another movie right now. Yeah. Um. What's what's the difference between making a hot movie and making a hot album? There is no difference. There have been people that have tried to tell me contrary to that, but um, like you said before, and like I said before, um, I strive for perfection, and uh, sometimes I'm a little bullheaded in my ways. Uh, hopefully, uh, people understand that. that there's just a lot on my mind, and I try to stay focused on one particular thing, and I try not to hurt nobody in the process. Um, The movie, the movie is a little bit more complex, but to me it's just the larger version of an album. There are scenes and there are songs, and they all go together to make this 
painting, and um, I'm the painter, and y'all are the paintees. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully it's something that you can get into. Jerome Benton stars in this new film with me, and um, he's on his way to becoming very, very big. Well, I'm real proud of him. Um, he, he takes direction well, and he gives direction well, and I expect a lot of big things from him. Uh, speaking of uh, Jerome Benton and uh, other people who've uh, flown under the wings of Prince, and also speaking of uh, Detroit's own Billy Sparks, you know, a person that you like took from Detroit, uh, put him in your first movie, yes. and you've uh, always uh, maintained contact with people that you've always been in contact with. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there, you know, there's people that have. Uh, uh, flown the coop, so to speak, and gone off to do their own thing, which is great. And I stand behind them and support support them with that, whatever they do. Um, but uh, contrary to rumors, we're we're all real tight still, and I have a strange feeling we're all going to be together again one day. We'll have to see. Do you think? Um do you think that there's a possibility that after um, this movie is, has been released that 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 is going to take place? There, there, well, I've you know just heard rumors through the grapevine that you know, there's a possibility that the time was going to record again. A possibility, you know, that uh, well, Mojo, anything's possible. Yeah, um, God willing and. Hopefully everybody's head will be in the right place. I'd like to see all that happen. They were, to be perfectly honest, the only band I was afraid of. And they were turning into, like, uh, Godzilla. And certain things happened, different waves flowed, um, different winds blew, and everybody fell apart. But uh, I, I still love all those guys and hope they get back together because... Uh, I want some competition, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Prince, uh, speaking of the uh, movie, Under the Cherry Moon, could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, God, I hate to blow the surprise, though, you know? Oh, you know, without blowing it. We, we know it's going to be in black and white. Yeah, it's going to be in black and white. And we know it's going to be, quote-unquote, hell of a... <laughs> yeah, it's going to be that going to be that um all i can tell you is that you'll have a good time i'm hoping that everyone understands where i was trying to go with it it is like an album for me and i put my heart and soul into it and i work very long and very hard jerome did the same and there's a message a message behind it all and i'm hoping that people think about it when they leave you know that's the main thing you know, it's a lot of fun but the it's something to think about when it's over. Let's talk about the album uh, Around the World in a Day, which I think was one of the, the greatest albums. My favorite. I, it's, it's absolutely my favorite without question. Uh, tunes like Around the World in a Day, Paisley Park. Um, what, 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 what type of mood were you in when you recorded that album? Um, I sort of had a FU attitude, meaning that I... I was making something for myself and my fans and the people who supported me through the years I wanted to give them something and it was my like my little letter and um, those people are the ones that wrote me back and told me that they felt what I was feeling you know and you know it record sales and things like that it, it really doesn't matter you know I mean it keeps a roof over your head and it keeps uh, money in all these folks pockets that I got hanging around here <laughs> you know but it, it basically stems from the music and I'm, I'm just hoping that people understand that that you know money is one thing but soul is another and that's all we're really trying to do you know it's uh, I don't know it's I, I wouldn't mind if I just went broke you know because as long as I could play this type of thing and come here, you know, 
I mean, there were a lot of people there tonight, and they turned the lights on, and I looked up, and, you know, it brings tears to your eyes because it's just, you can feel the love in the room, you know? And that means more than money, you know? I, I could just, I could go on for hours because, I don't know, I, I, I just have fun, and I'm thankful to be alive, you know? What's a day like in the life of Prince? Work. I work a lot. Um, I, I'm trying to get a lot of things done very quickly so that I can stop working for a while. Everyone's afraid I'm going to die. Uh, <laughs> you say you are afraid. No, I'm not afraid. Oh. Everyone else is afraid. They think I work too much. I'm not afraid of anything. It's been said that... Um that you work, uh, when you're working, you work when you're on the road, you carry a uh, studio around with you, you get up in the middle of the night, you get an idea for a tune, and, and you get up and go do it. There's just uh, no such thing as Prince being off from work. It's, it, I mean, well, some people have even called you the, the, the workaholic, uh, 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 ever-moving, one man storm is that true well i don't know it's the the thing is is that when you're called you're called you know and i hear things in my sleep i walk around i go in the bathroom and try to brush my teeth and all of a sudden the toothbrush start vibrating that's a groove you know and you know you gotta go with that and that means drop the toothbrush and get down to the studio or get to a bass guitar quick you know and I don't know, my best things have come out like that. To me, uh, making a song is like a, a new girl walking in the room, you know? It's, you never know what's going to happen until all the things come together. And there she stands. And she says, hi. You know, and you want to take a bite of this orange? You bite it and it's cool and, and I send it to you. You know? I know. What? Oh, Joe. Uh, look, I know. Dig up. Look here. W w one one question. Yes. W what's your favorite instrument? Mmm. Stewart. You play them all. <laughs> it, it, it's dirty. <laughs> it's, it's dirty. <laughs> now listen. <laughs> um, I don't know. It de it depends on the song. It depends on the color. They all sound differently. Um, it's very strange. I tried to um, stay original in my work and. Um, a lot of sounds have been used now, and I'm looking for new instruments and new sounds and new rhythms. And, uh, and I got a lot of surprises. I don't want to give them all away. Look, you've done everything. I mean, you've done. Not yet. You've, you've done. You've done. You've done hard rock. Uh, you've done some of the most sensuous. No, oh, it's we just scratch the surface with all that stuff. I mean, it's, there's so many sounds. It's limitless. Some people say you, you probably have, you know, in your secret vault, in the Prince Music Vault, about 500 tunes that you've done uh, that you haven't even considered using yet, that you could put out an album for the next 20 years, two albums a year. No, uh, not that many. 320, to be exact. Oh, uh, really? But then that's 500. 320 songs? Yeah. That, that have never been released? Mm hmm and it's been rumored that they all sound different. That's why probably uh, each album that you release is just a little bit different. Yeah. They don't all sound different. There's a couple times I copied myself. It's all right. It's all right to. It's all right to, uh, to copy yourself. You think you hit on something right? You try to do it again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Um, no, I try. I try not to do that too much. If I do that, there's usually someone around, Wendy or Lisa, or someone to say, "Hey, man, I've heard that. Put it away." And it goes away, and we don't hear from. Uh, that's all for a while. Mojo. Yeah. Guess what? What is that? We're all gonna go see Purple Rain tonight. You are. Yep. Look, yeah, I've seen it 12 times. I've seen it too many times, but I want to watch it again. I've seen it 12 times, and uh, I'll go watch it tonight. i, I tell you what, I'm going to ask everybody out there to go watch Purple Rain. But what time will you be watching it? Mm. About 15, 20 minutes, maybe? No, no, about um, three minutes. About three minutes? Knocking on my door, no. Okay, everybody's getting ready to go and turn the VCRs on right now to Purple Rain. Tell you what I'm going to do. What is that? I'll back tomorrow, and I'm going to leave a little message. At about four 
was 30. And this one is just for all the purple people. And um, I think they'll understand. You say, call, call you back tomorrow? I'll call you. You gonna call me? I got your number. You got my number? Yes. 4.30. Hmm? All right. Uh, Prince, it's been one big, it's been one big pleasure. Oh, I mean, like, you know, words cannot describe, you know, this moment. And I, I don't think words can describe how Detroit feels about Prince. So in closing, whatever you want to say to Detroit, they are ways of yours. You're listening to Electrify Mojo Rare Moments. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button. If you wish to subscribe, hit the subscription button.